Hello and welcome to another episode in the GDScript Fundamental Tutorial Series. In this episode, we will be taking a look at exports. Now, in Godot, class members can be exported to the Godot application using the export keyword. This means that in the Godot app editor, their values get saved along with the resource, such as the scene they are attached to. A benefit of using exports is that it's easier to edit values of member variables. The export keyword is a good way of testing game items without having to go inside the script and manually changing code. Examples include position, size, and speed of your game objects. Now, exports must have a variable initialized with a value being assigned to it, or a data type declared for it. This is because the editor needs to know what kind of display box to show you for editing data. This is a basic export. As you notice here, we have the export keyword, followed by a regular variable declaration. In this case, what we're doing is assigning a default value to our variable. When we assign a default value, the type of your variable is inferred by the literal value passed to it. In this case, because we're passing a string value, the data type for a string is going to be a string. This is what it looks like in the Godot app editor. You'll have your name followed by your default value. Now, keep in mind, if you were to put in a different value here, you will override the default value you put inside your script. You can also declare an export with parentheses, and inside the parentheses denote the data type you want to assign to your variable. Keep in mind, when you don't assign a value, you will be defaulted to zero, empty strings, or just plain empty. Now, the assignment will depend on what fits your data type. In this case, our variable another string will default to empty quotation marks. As you can see here, this is what it will look like in the editor, and it will be empty. You can also do other data types, including integers arrays. There's quite an extensive list. We won't go over all of them. But I just wanted to show you that when you don't assign a default value to your variable, it will default to either zero empty string or empty. In this case, our integer value is zero because we did not assign a default value. You can do basic enumerations using the parentheses, the first parameter. You can choose to be either an int or a string, followed by your values and double quotations. When you do this, you tell the Godot app editor to create a drop-down menu for you, so you can choose either the values up and down. It will spell it out in string value on the Godot editor, but keep in mind, that the value you will receive will be an integer value. In this case, since we did not assign a default value, our value will be assigned zero. We are displaying this box in our Godot editor and the drop-down menu, and the up value is defaulted. You will have the value zero returned back. If you went ahead and clicked this and chose down, the integer value being returned will be one. Again, enumeration start at zero and increment by one. You can also do the same thing with string values. Let's say you do not want an integer value returned, but rather a string. Well, in the first parameter, you declare string, followed by the string values you want to receive. Keep in mind, we are not assigning a default value. And because we did not assign a default value, we will be returned an empty value. So this is what it looks like. Notice how even though we have up, as the default value, we're not going to get the string value up returned back. Instead, we will be returned back an empty value. Now, if you do not want an empty value, then it's best to declare your variable when you're exporting string enumerations with a default value. Keep in mind, you are able to assign values that are not part of your export. So just be careful when assigning default values for enumeration strings. And actually that goes for every variable. You can also put enums. So as you can see here, we created an enum, unique name, and we passed it into our export. Our choices are up and down. We will be returned integer values and we default to zero because we did not assign a default value. Now, as you can see here, when we create it, this is what will show up in the Godot editor, a drop down menu with the choices in string format. We can export integers with the range of values shown in the Godot editor. Simply put in the parameter, the int keyword, followed by the max range value. In this case, our max range is 20. When we declare this, we are saying we want a value from 0 to 20. And of course, since we did not assign a value, we default to 0. 
You can also add a min and max value for your range. To do that, simply declare your integer followed by a comma, followed by your minimum value, another comma, and then your max value. Again, because we did not assign a default value, we default to zero. One thing to keep in mind is that in your Godot editor, you will be shown a value, your minimum value. However, despite your minimum value being 10, you will again default to zero unless you, for example, go here and click up and down, and then it will set the value for you. If you would like the minimum value set at the start, simply assign your minimum value. One cool thing about export is that you can export colors. To export a color, simply use in the first parameter the keyword color followed by the color model you want to use. You can use the RGB model, and when you don't assign a value, you get zero. Or what you can do is set the color model to RGBA, which then again sets its default value to 0001. Both of these values are basically black. As you can see here, this is what it looks like. You take in a value. Basically, you go ahead and click this box and a pop-up will come with the ability to choose a different color for your variable. To assign a value to your color model, simply use the color keyword followed by four integers, each representing in order R, G, B, A. In this case, we went ahead and assigned the color red as the default color to our color variable. Another thing is you can export node paths. Since we haven't assigned a value, we will default to empty. But in the inspector of the Godot application, you can assign a node that's in the existing scene. And it will look something like this. Go ahead and click this button to go ahead and assign a node to your export variable. Lastly, we have arrays. Keep in mind that while regular arrays are created locally to every class instance, exported arrays are shared between all class instances. There are two ways to export an array. One is to use the export keyword followed by the array keyword. This will assign an empty array. Lastly, you can initialize values to your array, such as the following. However, keep in mind that your values must be constant expressions. When you declare, this is what it will look like in your Godot editor. At the top, you can see the array size. You can change your array size in this column here. On the left, you can see the indexes, and on the right, you can see the values assigned to that index. Also, if you would like to change the constant expression in your array, Simply click the pencil button and you will be shown a drop down with a list of available data types you can assign to each index in your array. Well, that's all I have for you in this episode. I will not be showing code examples in this episode. I will be uploading a file to GitHub, so feel free to download that and play around with exports. Thank you for subscribing to the channel and thank you for clicking the like button. I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Have a wonderful day.